Artificial wave simulators. Yeah, we've seen them before. They're not exactly anything new, but check this one out. A 360 degree system that spits out not one, but up to five waves. So the team that run this operation are based in Queensland, Australia. With all the social distancing regulations, I haven't been able to check it out in person yet. But I did chat to Aaron Travis, founder and CEO of Surf Lakes Australia. Uh, we've created a uh, what we think is a revolutionary and patented wave generation system. Some years ago, I had inspiration of skimming rocks with my kids and I was throwing bigger boulders in as dads often do and watching these waves ripple out and break along the shore and wondering if that was a bigger scale, you know, could it work? Could we create something that would be uh, surfable? From the prototyping perspective, we've, we've done quite a few. It started in, you know, a backyard pool and then moved to a friend's farm farming paddock where I built a hand-built 125th scale model to prove the concept. I needed to know that it worked and that you could shape waves differently. And, and uh, we built a, a bigger prototype, a 125th scale, to prove things further and then jumped into the full-scale unit that we've got at Yapoon. So that was a big step. It was a very arduous, long, painful process, but well worth it because you just have to go through that to prove the point. As I said, we've seen wave generators before, so I wanted to get Aaron's take on what sets this one apart from the competition. Yeah, I think the, the obvious distinction is the fact that we're creating a circular set of swells. The benefits from that uh, are quite, there's quite a number. Um, we're, we're leveraging um, our displacement hull, if you like, using um, the buoyancy and gravity. Uh, which means there's a measure of efficiency and then you get a multiplier of multiple waves breaking at the same time and because you can shape those waves differently you then have simultaneous variety of the skill level of waves as well so you get more waves you get more variety uh, and with the unit we've created you can actually create larger waves than what's been available and even what we're producing now is still not really the full size. We don't know that there's an upper limit to that uh, because in theory you can make 15 foot face barrels. So you could have a pipeline at the push of a button if you really wanted to, which should be insane. But you could run it as a normal surf park and then for a big event you could turn it up to code red of the world's best pro surfers standing in barrels. The other benefit, which is not obvious, is that surfing, you want offshore wind conditions on the waves. Um, you want the wind to be feathering up the wave, not pushing the back of the wave. So because of we've got a 360 degree layout, it doesn't matter what the wind direction, half the waves will be experiencing the offshore conditions. So we can guarantee, you know, glassy or offshore conditions somewhere on the lake, not all at the same time, but somewhere on the lake. With the mechanism and, and how that's designed, uh, yeah, we looked at a number of options, but settled on pneumatic over hydraulic power. So we have the flexibility of you know compressed air uh, which you can uh, maneuver and change direction quite quickly and then you get the power of a hydraulic uh, drive in the middle and all that's a bit of patented process which allows us to move a large mass quickly and we're also looking at how that can be applied to other uh, industries and technologies so there's quite a list of ideas that we want to develop down the track but that's pretty much how it works and then as that machine moves up and down we have to tune that so that it works in harmony with with that moving water, so it becomes quite efficient. Now in the scheme of things, the plunger mechanism is quite compact. So the idea of having inland surf experiences, even competitions, does seem like it might well be a reality in the not too distant future. So why would you have artificial waves? It's, it's really that um, ability to duplicate perfection over and over. It allows then an environment where you can practice uh, a lot more consistently, a lot more regularly and just get more wave time. So in the ocean, you, you have to have the right conditions and you have to be there at the right time. And then you have to you know, basically battle others to get the waves anyway, um, and you can't do it at night. So the, the time that you'll get standing on a board and, and practicing maneuvers is incredibly accelerated compared to the ocean. So it just, the, the standards of surfing, as we've already seen with some of the surf parks, 
you know, the standard of people's aerials and, and other maneuvers is already uh, improving as a result of it. With surfing being in the Olympics, this provides the perfect surf stadium for viewing um, and for those events, but also for the practice and build up to it. You can have people in outer Mongolia, you know, joining the Olympic surf team, which would be absolutely bizarre normally. And sure, having a closed off prototype concept facility is one thing, but bringing it to the masses worldwide is where things will really start to get interesting. We, we really are um, pushing into the international market immediately. We've had more than 380 something inquiries now from around the world in most countries. Out of that, there's, there's 120 something projects that are you know, taking a serious interest. We've got, we've sold our first you know, license in the USA and there's another one coming through in the USA and there's two other territories that have been, you know, uh, taken options on in the US. Uh, I think it's now for over 50 countries where there's been inquiries uh, for them, but um, yeah, we're, we're really hoping to get the first commercial one out, you know, starting this year to be open next year. You know, for me, it's a dream come true. It's, a, it's, it's been crazy. When you, when you go to Yapoon and, and actually watch these waves rolling in and we see, you know, Mark Ocalupo and Barton Lynch and Ben Player and others, uh, world champion surfers that I get to surf with now, um, you know, enjoying these waves and you watch the reaction of, of everyone else as they see it for the first time. It's, it's quite humbling for us. Uh, and then knowing that it will be bigger, better and you know, in different locations where it would, it's it's quite a surreal thing when people see it. And, and even in fact, I think the best case is the, the farmer who owns the land that we're on. When we first stood on the hill that we'd made out of, you know, the excavation material and looking out over these waves breaking in his paddock, he just didn't have any words. He said, you're just going to have to send me the video. I don't even know how to describe this to my family. And it was quite, quite profound. Well, there you have it. A farm paddock that was converted to a surf facility and one that might well make an appearance in your area soon. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out some of our other videos where we take a look at wave generators and let us know in the comments if you've ever been on one or would like to get on one. Until next time, take it easy.